Unbelievable. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Unbelievable. I am so blessed to be here, aren't you? This has been wonderful. Crystal Lois, our dancers, and then my husband, my pastor. Isn't he something else? <laughs> Woo! He's been my pastor for 43 years. But here, a little bit of trivia. I heard his first sermon when he was 18 years old in my daddy's house. And he was just preaching away like he was preaching to 9,500 people. And it was just me. <laughs> and he said to me, Lois, what do you think? And I said, very good. But, you know, we can tweak this and tweak that. And he's been asking me that question for 43 years. What do you think? <laughs> and I've been answering that for 43 years. <laughs> Listen, before we get going, they want you to squeeze in a little bit. Okay, we've got a lot of people coming and we praise God for that. So if you have some space in your seat, just kind of squeeze in a little bit, all right? So we can get some other women in here. All right. Father, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to stand on your behalf. I'm an empty vessel needing to be used by you. You know the needs in this room. So we need to, including myself, hear a word from you. We need to hear from you. I'm going to hide today behind the old rugged cross because it's only the old rugged cross that can make a difference today in my life and those that you've given me the opportunity to share with today. So now we ask these things in your name and your name is Jesus Christ, the son from Nazareth. And we pray these things in your name. I am so glad you're here today. And I'm going to talk to you today about the legacy of a kingdom woman. But listen, I'm the storyteller in our family. So you're going to hear some of my business. I'm going to tell you a story of the legacies in my family. And why I'm standing here today with the confidence of Jesus Christ in my life. It's because I'm standing on the shoulders of some great women of God in my life. And there are two women that I want to tell you a story about that have impacted my life. They're my granny and my mother. You don't know their names. Some of you know my mommy, but you don't know, some of you don't know them at all. But today I'm going to make sure you know who they are because I'm standing on their legacy. My granny's name is Ivy, and I have to look down because growing up we called her Granny. I had to call my mama to say, what is her name again? <laughs> her name is Ivy Irene Flossie Boren Bevon. Yes, that's her name. That's my granny's name. And she was married to Charles Robert Bevon for over 30 years. My mama has told us that she remembers a great memory of just laughter and fun. It was kind of a light home. My mother, my grandmother was a disciplinarian, but grandpa was the comedian. So mama says she just remembers a whole lot of laughter and a whole lot of fun. And when granny would discipline them, my grandfather would pull them aside and talk about the discipline and talk about their mother and just make it light. So again, mama just remembered a God-fearing home with a lot of laughter and a lot of fun. One night my grandfather said, Ivy, cook me some food. Because if I die tonight, I want to die with my belly full. <laughs> and he did. He died that night suddenly and unexpectedly. And it changed my grandmother's life totally and suddenly. Here she went from a modest home, comfortable God-fearing home, a lot of laughter, a lot of fun, a lot of comfortability, assuredness of the next day to loss. She had to move from her comfortable home to government housing with four children as a single parent. There was lack of money, lack of material things. I remember my grandmother calling my uncle saying, you better send that check. We need some food in this place. I remember that vividly. She lost her daughter to cancer, one of her daughters to cancer. But listen, the legacy I have of my grandmother is I never heard any complaining. 
I never heard any whining. I never heard grandma fussing at everybody because God was mean to her. I just never heard that. And I was around her a lot. We were around her in the summers. And grandma would make it so much fun for us. So much joy in the home again. So much love. So much laughter. I just never hung around a woman that was totally depressed. Because I think she knew somebody. She had confidence in somebody. <laughs> and so as a kid, my legacy is watching my grandma stay steady when life showed up and showed out. When we were there for the summers, grandma would watch us play outside. In those days, you played outside. <laughs> you came in for water and they told you, get back outside. <laughs> and my grandma, she would um, uh, just watch us. She would sit, be sitting at the window, just kind of watching us, making sure, you know, nothing, no strange person showed up and took us away. So I'm, I'm seeing it now as I'm talking to you. Wonderful summers with my grandmother, with her watchful eye. And grandma would be shuffling. I don't know why, but grandma always moved fast. She was always got something to do. And because grandma managed her home. Even though there was disappointment and there were changes in her life, grandma was still doing things that she was commanded to do by the king of kings and lord of lords. Grandma knew somebody. So at the end of the day, while our play was over, it was dusk, we could then come into the house. And grandma would call us in for dinner. And I am remembering the smells of dinner. As grandma prepared for her grandchildren to come in. There was little food, but there was never lack. Because I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. That's the legacy I got from my grandmother. That in the midst of lack, she still knew somebody that could take care of her and her children. But you know, life got overwhelming for grandma. And I remember many times watching her and I could tell it was coming down on her. She would wipe that sweat off her face. There was no air conditioner or even fans. Grandma just kept going, but I'd hear her say, Lord have mercy. Now my grandma wasn't just making a statement. She really believed that the Lord could have mercy in her situation. And I think today in our society, we need to really call on the name of the Lord. Because he can have mercy in, in your situation. Grandma would sing her way through. You and I need to learn to praise our way through situations in our life. And challenges in our life. I, I got that legacy from my grandma. When things show up in your life, start humming. You don't have to know to sing. Just sing. <laughs> Open your mouth and give him praise. That's the legacy I got from my grandma. Grandma would visit us from time to time in the city. And again, I'm seeing her right now. And I'm telling you the story of my legacy. She would be coming, stepping. I'd be looking out and there's grandma coming with a hat on her head. Purse over her arm. I think her Sunday best. And platform shoes, the shoes that are now in style today. <laughs> and I'm saying, when Grandma got to her house, I said, Grandma, where were you? Were you in church? Were you having fun with your friends? Were you at lunch or something? She said, no. I just came to see you guys. I just came to visit. Grandma walked like she knew somebody. Like she belonged to somebody. I think my grandma knew that she belonged to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So when even she came to visit us, she was stepping out, representing the one that she called on throughout her whole journey. She belonged to somebody. So even with the changes and challenges in grandma's life, my legacy from my grandmother is that she knew how to trust God in the dark. In the dark of her life. If she was a kingdom woman, she walked on purpose. And then she transferred all of that wonderful legacy to my mother. So my mother brought into her relationship with my dad the strength of the God of her mother and the faith of her mother and the confidence of her mother. Legacy was passed along to my mother. I saw Isaiah 59, 21 happen right before my eye. My spirit that I put upon you 
and my word that I put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your offspring, or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord, from this time forth and forever. Ladies, this is not about you and me. It's about generations to come. This is about legacy. Who are you? Are you a child of the king? Then live based on his principles. That's what my grandmother saw. Life was not, we would say, fair to my grandmother, but she embraced possibilities in her life, that for her children, and now I'm standing here as her great grand, our granddaughter <laughs> with the legacy of the faith of my grandmother. She believed in embracing possibilities for generations to come. She looked at the long view. Too many of us have the short view of life. It's today and today and today. No, it's a long view. But she gave us a precious mother, and her name is Annie Eileen Bevon Cannings. And you notice I didn't have to look down for that because she's right here in this room today. <laughs> she's 94 years old. And Elizabeth, could you shove her up out, out of that seat? I want her to stand up. Come on, somebody get her up. <laughs> there she is. That's my precious mother. And I have to continue telling you the story of my legacy. Whew. And the Lord has to help me. I am living on purpose today. Because my mother lived on purpose. I watched her continue in strength. She married my daddy. His name is James Basil Cannings. And they were married for 64 years before God took him home six years ago. It was not an easy life. They got married with little. My mother told us that their first kitchen or dining room tables were boxes. But she was happy to be married to this man that God gave her. She sacrificed so much to be married to my daddy. Because he was just starting out in business. But she believed in him. He was a man of God. And they started out life together because she saw her grandma make it as a single woman. She knew that she could make it with my daddy, although there was little. So I grew up in a home watching the strength of my legacy walk in the power of the risen Christ. Today, mommy has eight kids. <laughs> And we all know Jesus because, yeah. We all know Jesus because mom made a decision to commit herself to those eight kids. Let me tell you something. My mama had dreams. My mom wanted to do something with her life. She was a professional woman. Yeah, she taught the word. She was a Bible study teacher. She was a musician. She sang. She was gifted. She worked in retail. She was a seamstress. I could go on and on about my mama's resume. But God chose to change her plans and change her path and gave her eight of us knuckleheads. <laughs> and in those days, there was no birth control at my mother's house, so we came every other year. <laughs> So mom's plans changed, but she knew that she was in the hand of a great God that had a better plan for her life. And her plans changed as she gave birth to eight kids. The scriptures I know today, I learned around the knees of my mother. She would have devotions with us every day before we went to school. Wherever we were, she'd grab us and say, it's time for devotions. And I think she has a little bit of the genes from my mother, disciplinarian. And I think I got that too. 
<laughs> a little, little confession is good for the soul. But she would, <laughs> she would gather us together and lead us in God's word. Listen, let me tell you about my mother. Her plans changed, but she, again, knew that God had something better for her. Are your plans changing and you're wondering what God is doing in your life? If you know him, Jeremiah 1.5 is real. Before he placed you in your mother's womb, he knows what you should be doing today with your life. So as pastor said at the beginning of this year to the members of this church, the password is surrender. Surrender your life, your plans to the king of kings. My mother did. And she sat us around. And listen, today five of us are in full-time ministry for the Lord. <laughs> Mom wanted to be a missionary, but today I want to give her praise in the gates. That she was able to train, well, birth first, train, mentor, and coach five women and men in ministry for the Lord. So give my mother praise in the gates today. Woo! There's some more about my story. You know, it was only daddy was the only breadwinner in our home. So we too had a modest upbringing. And so we, when we wanted to do any extracurricular activities, dad would say, hey, you guys just need to stay after school. And whatever they offer for free, y'all take it. <laughs> and we did. Because we knew my dad was working so hard to keep food on our table. But my mother, as I said, she was so gifted. And, and, and at that time, she, I think, constantly heard us talking about camp. You know, she kept saying, these kids are talking about this Christian camp. And, of course, they couldn't afford to send us. And I guess we were just talking about it among ourselves. You know, how our friends were coming back telling us how wonderful camp was and things like that. And we wanted to go, but we know we couldn't go. So we just kept talking about it, and they would come back and tell us the stories. But I think my mom and dad heard it enough. And my mother said, well, you know what? I'm doing some sewing right now. And let me tell you something, a little side note. My mother could sew. She would measure you and then cut the pattern. She didn't need a pattern. <laughs> That's how gifted she was. But she was taking in some sewing at the time. And she said, Lois, look, I'm going to take in some extra sewing. You just have to take care of the house and do everything. I'm going to take in some extra sewing so you can go to camp. And you're wondering why I'm telling the story. Because it was at camp that I walked down the aisles and said yes to Jesus Christ for ministry. <laughs> Simply because... My mom saw possibilities in her kids. She also, too, like any one of us, life became overwhelming. It was a lot. In those days, there was nothing in a box or a can. You had to make everything from scratch. So my mom, like her mother, was shuffling along day, every day, doing something, making something, washing the dishes, and then, of course, we had chores. But my mom kept busy. So I, too, heard my mom in a different way say, look, I am doing this for his name's sake. Ooh, so my mom, too, knew somebody. She knew somebody bigger than her and bigger than her situation that could give her the power she needed every day to take care of those eight kids. I have a legacy today of reliance on God's power for everything I need in my life. How do you think I make it? When life shows up for me and challenges do, and listen, it'll show up for everybody from here out. Because in this world, you will have tribulation. But I learned by looking at my granny and my mother that I am an overcomer because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. What is your testimony today? I am somebody because I watched my granny and my mother walk through life holding on to an unchanging God. I am a daughter of a king, just like my granny and my mommy. My legacy today is watching my granny and mother walk through life based on their position and not based on their circumstances. They did not let their circumstances control who they knew they were and who they knew they belonged to. How about you? You're sitting here today with circumstances in your life. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you belong to? I am talking about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who through the stars in space and knows them by names 
He knows the number of hairs on your head. And when you get to my age, you lose some hair. And he still knows the number of hairs on my head. That's who I'm talking about that has your plan, your plan, your plan in his hands. You have to know who you are. And you have to stand on who you are when life shows up. And it will for everybody. That's just how it is. The story is told of the queen's daughter. The queen and her daughter went to some function. And the daughter was bored to death. And so she constantly kept slipping in her seat. And the queen kept looking at her saying, daughter, sit up. And she would sit up for a while. And then she would slump back down in her seat again. And the queen would look at her again and said, I said, sit up. Don't you know who you are? And, a, you know, being a little girl, she slumped back down. Oh, probably some boring activity that was expected of her. And the queen looked at her, maybe the third time, fourth time, whatever, and said to her, sit up, I said. Don't you know who you are? Regardless of what's happening here today, you are a child of the king. Sit up. I don't know what's happening in your life. What's making you uncomfortable? What's making you immovable? Or just, you just don't, some of you were drug in here today. I don't know what it is. But I want to remind you that you, if you know Jesus as your personal savior, you are a child of a king. So sit up. Hey, sit up somebody. Sit up. And tell yourself, I, I'm dealing with life, Lord, but I know you're in control. Because Isaiah 49, 17 says, your name and my name <laughs> is engraved. Another version says, inscribed on the palm of his hand. Do you know who you are? The King of kings and Lord of lords has your name and my name inscribed on his hand. That's how close you are to God's heart. You are an arranged. You have an arranged. I'm going to read this thing because this is deep. It was deep to me when I was preparing it. Because <laughs> you and I have to be reminded of who we are. He's got you that close to his heart. And he also has you covered. You are a covenant daughter of God. Nothing can change in your life, again, if you know him as your personal savior. And for those of you who don't know him, we're praying that you meet him today. At the end of this conference, there will be women from our prayer ministry standing up front. And don't leave this conference today without finding Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Because I'm getting ready to tell you, when you accept Jesus as your personal savior, you are covered by the king of kings and lord of lords. And you could step out saying, I know who I am. I'm a child of the king. I am a kingdom woman. Not based on my situation, but based on my position. You, are, you have an arranged, authorized, legal, accrued, literal, unconditional, everlasting, yeah, my Lord. Eternal, official relationship with the king. You are covered. It is a legal Binding declaration that gives you and me the right to expect the excellent power, provision, promise, position, and authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's what access you have. But you and I have to walk every day, sometimes every moment of every day, declaring who we are. you got to learn to, like Don Lawrence says in his song, encourage yourself. You got to learn to talk to yourself. You have to learn to encourage yourself. Tell yourself who you are and walk on top of your circumstances. You have to encourage yourself because the song says the enemy will create walls, but giants, they do fall. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. When I need encouragement, oh sure, I live with the greatest pastor in this world, but sometimes he's not home. And I, <laughs> he, has, he has to work at the church. He has to minister. And I have to go, listen, I, look, I'm telling you the truth. 
I have stepped in the mirror and looked at myself and said, you can make it. <laughs> Run on a little bit longer, Lois. You can do it. You can take care of these children just like your grandmother did. You can make it in ministry. When the folks talk about you, you can make it. Because I'm going to encourage you. So if you see me walking in here like a child of the king, it's because I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Because I belong to a child. Let me tell you some more. You are not the tail. Deuteronomy 29, 13 says, you are the head. Tell yourself that. Every time something shoots you in the face that this life has brought you. Because I said it earlier, in this world, you will have tribulation. The Lord did not lie to you and me. We're the ones that get saved and think we're walking through a rose bush for the rest of our lives. He told you the truth. You will have life show up. But you have to act on his word. He says, you are not the head. You are the head. <laughs> and you're not the tail. But there's more to the scriptures now. This will happen. You'll be able to declare and see God's deliverance in your life. It'll only happen. Here's some key words. I've been on some good Bible teaching all my life. So we got to do some key words. This will only happen if you listen to the commands of the Lord. Your God. Not your friends. Not all these talk shows. And I, I look at some of them, but you know, not all of them. <laughs> you have to listen to the commandments of the Lord your God that I tell you today. And here's another word. You must, be, you must carefully, carefully trust and obey me. See, this is not promised to all of God's children. It's just to all of God's children who trust and obey what he tells them to do. God loves all of us, but some of us choose to have a closer relationship with this king that says, you are the head and not the tail. I'm going to bathe you in some more scriptures of the covering that you have. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 9 says, and this is what we love though, but this is based on covering, based on what you trust, if you trust and obey him. You are blessed in the fields. I know I'm going to get some amens right now. But it's if you trust and obey him. <laughs> You're blessed with your grounds. You're blessed with the fruit of your cattle. This is Deuteronomy 28. He will give you increase. Blessed shall be the basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed you shall be when you come in and go out. Your enemies who rise against you one way, hey, and they will flee seven different ways. And you will see it. It reminds me of the children of Israel, right? They crossed the Red Sea and they looked back and said, hello. God took care of business. <laughs> this one ministers to me. I'm going to read it again. Your enemies who rise against you one way. They'll flee before your eyes in seven different ways. But this is if you trust and obey this king I'm talking about. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. If you trust and obey. If you listen to my commandments and trust and obey me as your king. This is what I've promised you. Bless you in the land. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. He will bless the work of your hands. And here's another one we love. Isaiah 40, 54, 17. No weapon formed against you and me will prosper. No weapon. It'll be formed. It'll be staring you in your grill. <laughs> I've had a whole lot of weapons formed against me staring at me. And I'm like, woo, trust and obey. Did you listen? To, I just speak in the word. Nobody see my lips moving. I'm speaking the word. Oh, Father, you got to take care of this one. <laughs> it will not prosper. So do you believe, church women, Christians, 
Do you believe in the power of God's word? I've seen some of you running down this aisle. I've seen some of you holding your hands up, talking about he's able, but do you really believe in the power of the word for you? Proverbs 18, 21 says, then speak it. Speak it based on your position as a child of the king and not based on what circumstances you're going through right now. Do you believe in the power of his name? I heard those amens. Then call on the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call on the name of your mighty God and he will take care of you in every season of a kingdom woman's life. So if you believe this with me today, repeat after me. I know who I am. I am a kingdom woman. I am a child of the king. I am royalty. I've got royal blood flowing through my veins. I know who I am. Do you? I know who I am. I know who I am, I know who I am, I am yours, I am yours, you are mine. Sing with me, sing with me. Jesus, you are mine, you are mine. Jesus, you are mine. One more time. I know, I know. I know who I am, I am yours, I am yours, you are mine. Jesus, you are mine, you are mine. I hear a little something, something. Go ahead, go ahead. Jesus, you are mine. God bless you.